Among the many incredible feats and astonishing missions that NASA has undertaken throughout the years, there's one space program that stands out above the rest, Apollo. The numerous tests and the 12 manned space flights that took place between 1961 and 1972 altered the course of human history and effectively put an end to the space race between the USA and the Soviet Union. In the last episode, we saw how the Soviets had continued to achieve many firsts in the space race. But with the arrival of the Apollo program, NASA and the United States were determined to strike back. Sit back, strap in, and hold on tight, because in this episode, we're going to the moon. Although the Apollo missions were later dedicated to President John F. Kennedy's publicized goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth, the program was actually first conceived during the administration of Dwight D. Eisenhower, the president who came before Kennedy. It was intended as a follow-up to Project Mercury and to explore three-man space flights as opposed to the two-man flights with the Gemini spacecraft or the solo flights with the Mercury spacecraft. According to NASA, Apollo's main goals included establishing the technology to meet other national interests in space, carrying out a program of scientific exploration of the moon, developing human capability to work in the lunar environment, and achieving superiority in space for the United States. You might remember the Little Joe rocket from episode two. Well, in 1963, NASA built a 26-meter tall rocket named the Little Joe 2. It wasn't so little anymore, though. The rocket was used to make sure the Apollo launch escape system was man-rated at minimum cost early in the program. In total, five uncrewed tests were done with the Little Joe 2. A much bigger rocket, the 55-meter tall Saturn 1, was built in 1961. Ten Saturn I rockets were flown before it was replaced by the heavy lift derivative Saturn 1B. The Saturn 1B was a huge 68 meter tall rocket. While the Saturn 1 could carry 20,000 pounds to low Earth orbit, the Saturn 1B could carry more than double that amount. After NASA had done a few test flights with the giant rocket, the time had come to launch the first crewed mission. However, things didn't exactly get off to the best of starts, though. On January 27, 1967, Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee were sitting in the Apollo spacecraft during a test. The test had not been considered dangerous since the rocket was unfueled. The three crew members were waiting in the spacecraft since there were communication errors. Hey, how are we gonna get to the moon? We can't talk between three buildings. Just one minute later, these men went through absolute horror. The plug door hatch could not be opened because of the internal pressure in the cabin, and all three men died because of the fire. The devastating event resulted in many delays and reshuffling of NASA's schedule. Initially, the mission was named AS-204. But to honor the crew, the name was officially changed to Apollo 1. There was never an Apollo 2 or 3 flight. Apollo 4 was the first uncrewed test flight of the famous Saturn V launch vehicle, which was a 111 meter tall rocket, making it the largest rocket ever built. And that record has not yet been broken as of February 2021. It is even taller than the Statue of Liberty, and keep in mind that the rocket was first built in 1967. That's more than 50 years ago. In 1968, two more uncrewed missions followed with Apollo 5 and 6. For Apollo 5, the Saturn 1B rocket was launched, producing 7,100 kilonewtons at liftoff. Only a few months later, the Saturn V was launched for the Apollo 6 mission producing a whopping 35,000 kilonewtons. In October 1968, Walter Shearer, Don Sell, and Walter Cunningham achieved a successful launch with the Saturn 1B launch vehicle. 
Apollo 7 was an incredibly important mission as it was the first crewed mission after the horrific event of Apollo 1. It was also the first time the Apollo spacecraft was used. Apollo 7 was in Earth orbit for 11 days. Today I would tell people about this, that was the longest, it was the most ambitious, and the most successful first test flight of any new flying machine ever. It's also noted as being the flight on which the first ever live TV broadcast was performed from an American spacecraft. NASA later stated that although these early pictures were crude, they served as educational moments for the public. At the end of the Apollo 7 mission, when the crew prepared for landing, they were obligated to wear their helmets for safety. However, the crew had a cold and were scared of possibly bursting their eardrums while wearing helmets, so they refused to wear them. Slayton from Ground Control ended up saying, the only thing we're concerned about is the landing. We couldn't care less about the re-entry, but it's your neck and I hope you don't break it. Shira, the mission commander, responded, thank you, babe. Luckily, the crew safely returned to Earth and the Apollo 7 mission was considered a great success. Starting with the launch of Apollo 8 on 21 December 1968, manned missions took place using the Saturn V launch vehicle. The rocket consisted of three stages. The first stage would bring the vehicle to an altitude of about 42 miles. The second stage carried it from there almost into orbit, and the third stage placed the Apollo spacecraft into Earth orbit and pushed it towards the moon. Given the tagline of round the moon and back, the Apollo 8 mission was just that. The Apollo 8 crew became the first humans to orbit the moon. After six days and three hours, the crew safely returned to Earth. While the United States was making significant progress, the race wasn't won yet. The Soviet Union had built their biggest rocket ever. The N1 rocket was a mighty 105 meters tall, just slightly shorter than the Saturn V. However, it was more powerful. In February 1969, the N1 was launched, producing a whopping 45,000 kilonewtons at liftoff. Just 68 seconds into the flight, all 30 engines for the first stage were shut down due to a failure. A few months later, in July 1969, the Soviets launched a second N1 vehicle. This time, all the engines instantly shut down except engine 18. This caused the N1 to lean over at a 45 degree angle and drop back onto the launch pad, which caused a massive explosion. Meanwhile, NASA had launched another crewed Saturn V rocket. Apollo 9 was the first flight of the full Apollo spacecraft, which was massive compared to the Mercury and Gemini spacecraft. The Apollo spacecraft included a lunar module. The module would be necessary for landing on the moon. Apollo 9 tested the module and performed docking with the command module again, an essential capability required for the first crewed lunar landing. All prime mission objectives were met and all the major spacecraft systems worked flawlessly. The Apollo 10 mission was essentially a practice run for the moon landing and it involved all aspects of a crewed lunar landing except for the actual touchdown on the moon. The lunar module got as close as 9.7 miles to the lunar surface. All mission objectives were achieved including multiple live color TV transmissions. Here's the code name of our lunar module Snoopy. And Snoopy, it was a fairly good dog for us. In fact, it's a fantastic uh, vehicle to fly. On July 16, 1969, the crew of Apollo 11 set off on what would become the most famous and arguably the most significant space flight ever. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Just four days after launch, the crew arrived at the moon on July 20. Buzz Aldrin successfully landed the lunar module on the moon. The Eagle has landed. He reported, referring to the name given to the lunar module of Apollo 11, Eagle. An estimated 650 million people across the world watched as Neil Armstrong descended the steps of the lunar module and took man's first step onto the surface of the moon. Armstrong famously declared, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Or did he? Fun fact, despite it being one of the most famous lines said in human history, Armstrong maintains he was actually misquoted. He actually said that's one small step for a man. 
since man and mankind are essentially the same thing and wouldn't have made sense without the A. It's just that people didn't hear the A, Neil Armstrong told the press after the Apollo 11 mission. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong explored the moon's surface, planted an American flag, took pictures and collected 47.5 pounds of lunar material to bring back to Earth. The two astronauts became immensely famous upon their return, as you would expect. But do you know the third astronaut's name? Command Module Pilot Michael Collins. He stayed in the command module all alone, orbiting the moon while his colleagues were wandering around on its surface. Collins was the first person to have performed more than one spacewalk. It's a shame that his name often gets forgotten. Well, here's to you, Mike. And now you know his name. Maybe it will help you out if you're ever asked at a pub quiz. Who was the third lesser known astronaut who flew on board Apollo 11? Another fact that often surprises people is that NASA sent a total of 24 astronauts to the moon, 12 of whom actually walked on the moon's surface. And apparently walking on the moon isn't as easy as it seems. Hang on. Yeah. Oh. Dead Jack Schmidt. <laughs> I feel like Bud Alan Shepard was among those moonwalkers and he was the only astronaut from Project Mercury to reach the moon. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing as NASA only narrowly managed to avert a crisis with the Apollo 13. As documented in the blockbuster movie of the same name, Apollo 13 suffered a catastrophic failure when one of its oxygen tanks exploded. Houston, we have a problem. It was instantly clear to the astronauts, Jim Lavelle, Jack Swigert and Fred Hayes that a third landing on the moon wasn't going to happen. Instead, it turned into a struggle for survival and how to get home. Thanks to some genius engineering on the fly by the crew and using the lunar module as a lifeboat, the astronauts safely returned to Earth. Although the primary objective set by President John F. Kennedy to perform a crewed lunar landing and return to Earth was already achieved with Apollo 11, more Apollo missions followed until the last mission with Apollo 17 in 1972. During its 11-year lifespan, a total of $25.4 billion was invested in the Apollo program, which adjusted for inflation is the equivalent of more than $159 billion today. As for the Soviet Union, their N-1 rocket never went beyond its first stage and failed twice more. While the Soviet Union seemed to be the front runner in previous episodes, the space race was eventually clearly won by the United States. However, there was still much more to accomplish for NASA, including the space shuttle program, the International Space Station, and plans for the future to send humans to Mars. So I hope you are excited for more Evolution of NASA episodes. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more episodes.